tips to support your SLO journey, bring your air budgets to life. Hello, uh, my name is Michael March and I'm the head of innovation here at ISIS Technology. Um, I'm also the SLO evangelist. So I have two goals with this presentation. Uh, the first goal is to, I wanna help you make your SLO documentation the center of attention and not an afterthought in your SLO journey. Uh, two, uh, I want to help you make your SL, SLO documentation help you self-document the rest of your air budget process. I know it sounds kind of weird, uh, but you'll see as we get along in this, in this uh, presentation. So, but before we go through all that, let's quickly reflect on implementing SLOs and it's hard work. So let's go quickly through those uh, three components. First of all, there's a culture commitment that you have to do with the organization. You have to sell the concept of S SLOs internally. You have to get buy-in from executives. And you need to get real budget, not just air budget, real money budget to implement these things. You have to beef up your tooling. You have to enhance or add to your current monitoring systems. You have to tune operational systems to be able to handle alerts from your SLO uh, uh, platforms to help you do that. Uh, and you have to you know, beef up your dashboard systems also. And uh, finally, there's the process component where you have to, you know, identify teams who are going to pilot this with you, uh, you know, help define SLIs for the impact of services. And most importantly, at least for the purposes of this conversation, you have to author air budget policies. Now, you, you've done it with your organization. You have started this SOL. You've launched internally. And at first, your organization is probably elated, uh, everything's bright, the, the, the air's fresh. Uh, but then five minutes later, that sinking feeling sets in. And in my experience, that f sinking feeling is the fact that you have to enforce the air budget policy. Uh, first of all, it's hard to enforce a, a, a policy that's locked in a document. Um, and these, air, uh, these, S, these SLO documents uh, in, in, in including your air, air budget policy, they're only re revisited usually when there's an issue. And without automation and triggers backing those, it, enforcement of those policies can, can become arbitrary. People can choose not to enforce them or they can forget to enforce them. Uh, and there's no reason to make being that person, the enforcer, harder than it already is. Like I said, these things are locked away in like a SharePoint or a Wiki or, you know, a Git. Uh, so I think the goal is to take this kind of boring document, although very important, and to make the documents live. Uh, um, increase their relevance uh, by increasing engagement. And with that paired with automation, enforcement of the policies locked in these documents becomes easier. So our first example of how to kind of spice up these documents and make them more relevant uh, is to, in transforming your air budget policy document into an air budget policy hub, you can say, is to let's uh, focus on the revised date of, of these documents. Um, all SL documents like the air budget policy have a, have a revisit date. And believe it or not, organizations, although these documents have them, these get ignored all the time. Uh, like for instance, this is the famous air budget example that you can get off the internet. Uh, and this one here has a revisit date of um, uh, this June. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take and create or take an existing shared calendar like this for our organization, we have an SLO shared calendar and we're gonna take that uh, URL for it and we're going to embed it in this document. So when you click on it, you can see the shared calendar with all the events um, and you can, people can see the calendar, they can uh, subscribe to it and it just makes this document more relative to find out information about not just the policy, but links to the enforcement. Let's take it one step further though. Let, let's do it like an extra credit task. We're going to create a, re create a recurring task that will 
help enforce this revisit date. So why are we doing this as opposed to just the calendar? Because we wanna create something that inserts this SLO process into a team's normal work stream. So it's harder to ignore. It's easy to ignore a calendar event, re, re shuffle it, uh, there's no audit trail. This creates a distinct audit trail uh, and an, kind of an immovable object that people have to deal with. Um, these tasks can have a defined workflow. So if you want to like, if you want to have it so there's like certain you know, people have to approve whatnot, it all can be in that task. And also that 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 task can can have a a service owner due date, whatever else you want into it. So we're gonna set up a Jira, in, in this case, a Jira automation, or it can be a different platform, where I have it schedule a task every 90 days, create an SOL type task in a um, project that is participating in this. And then you see here, every 90 days later in For Infinity, it's gonna create one of these tasks. But most importantly, we're gonna take that task and we're going to embed it in the document. So not only do, do, not only do we have this uh, revised date link to our shared calendar, but we have an actual event here that is going to be the thing that enforces that to happen. Now, we're going to take it a step further and we're going to embed an, the escalation policy uh, into this document. So every air budget policy document has a threshold se um, se section that for what when certain, when certain thresholds are exceeded on a air budget, it tells you what's supposed to happen. So we're gonna pick on air budget, or we're gonna pick on threshold three, which says in, when a 30 day air budget is, is exhausted and the root cause has not been found, the SRE blocks releases and asks for more, more support from the dev team. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use our SOL tool of choice to help enforce the policy using webhooks. And in Jira, we're going to uh, define an, an incoming webhook. We're going to have it where when that SL tool triggers that webhook, it's going to create an SL task in our project of choice. Um, and we're going to have it set the set the the summary of that task, the 30-day air budget depleted, and we're going to have it be set as a blocker. So that will give the SRE more and, and more ammunition to deal with this in the proper way. And right here, we've created that automation and we're going to take that link and where we're going to actually going to put it in back into the air budget policy. So not only does air budget policy say what's supposed to happen, it has a link back to automation that enforces it. And now finally, we're going to uh, trigger that webhook to, to simulate what that SOL platform would, would do. And you see here, it creates the task. It has me as the me as the service owner, and it set the priority at, at, as a blocker. So I have the ammunition to go on and and and, and get the resources I need and stop further um, work on features. And then finally, that all gets plowed back into the um, into the air budget policy document. So that blocker now shows up as a live status of that threshold. So now it is that threshold there and it's defined. I see the current status of it in real time. So let's kind of weave this all together where now if you went to the extreme and you took that document, again, you have the plain document and say you went and you linked it up with every uh, each automation, uh, you see here, you get a much more rich experience. You get all the links to all the appropriate services. You get gadgets that show you the status of your SLO at any at that given time. Uh, and you also get all your other events. It's all in context. So you see your policy and you see the context of it live at the moment. So it makes it much more powerful and it makes it a tool that your team can use all the time, not just when a problem happens. So that's it. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Uh, if you need to contact me during the uh, conference, please do. Or you can always uh, tweet me at Comics. Again, this is Mike March. Uh, thank you so much.